And so there's a lot of confusion right now about what is feminine power, what are uh, archetypes, um, what are um, aspects, symbolic representations of what wisdom traditions have called uh, the divine feminine. Now, I'm aware that in our modern society, um, things change depending on the culture and the worldview and uh, some aspects, some, some descriptions uh, that we used in the past may not be relevant now or may be politically incorrect. Um, so I'm not totally up to date with uh, current thinking on feminine power, but I do understand and have spoken about and have embodied feminine power in my own biological organism. And so I can talk about it with a reasonable degree of authority. And so if you like that idea, and um, I hope you do, let me know and I can continue this topic on what is feminine power. Okay, so Lisa says, yes, feminine power. Okay, so in the great wisdom traditions of the world, particularly in the East, but also in Greek mythology, there are two aspects um, with which consciousness um, expresses itself. Uh, one is uh, the masculine, which uh, symbolizes things like conquest, even predation, initiative, physical strength, uh, physical power, muscle power. And this kind of uh, masculine um, understanding of the energies that uh, um, embody in our biology, these qualities of, co of consciousness, power, physical power, strength, initiative, conquest. These go back to the hunter-gatherer age and uh, were responsible for all patriarchal cultures for biological reasons. But uh, we are in a different time right now where the predatory masculine, physical, um, predatory masculine, physical strength uh, without being balanced by the uh, feminine archetypes uh, that exist in our collective consciousness, without that balance uh, can lead to our extinction. So um, we need right now to embody what is called feminine power. So in, in great spiritual traditions, and I'm not talking right now about strident feminine activism. There are a lot of people doing that and um, it's important um, to bring about the shift just like Black Lives Matter is important to bring about a shift just like extreme um, nationalism is right now at risk. So too, right now, uh, it's very important that we see that uh, unless we embody aspects of archetypal feminine strengths, uh, we could risk our extinction in order to have a more peaceful, just, sustainable, healthier, joyful world. We need to bring in our own awareness and embody in our body because the body is Awareness. The body is awareness. Your physical, biological organism is awareness, period. Uh, and it's 1% of who you really are. You know, the, the electromagnetic spectrum um, that expresses itself as this rainbow body. Rainbow means color. Uh, two extremes, bookends, white and black, but everything in between is a rainbow body and those two white and black are the alpha and the omega of the rainbow body so without them no rainbow bodies and uh, so uh, when we meditate on an archetypal energy 
and archetypal awareness and we understand that our body is also modified awareness then we can embody what we are invoking or embodying and these are there are tantric rituals to do that but there have been rituals um, in every tradition of the world to invoke and embody feminine power so in Greek mythology, these are usually represented as these seven uh, feminine archetypes. Okay, let me share with you what they are. So Demeter is the divine mother, embodies anything connected to nurturing and motherhood. Okay. Athena is the archetypal embodiment of wisdom, knowledge, art, culture, music, science, Athena. Aphrodite represents sexuality and sensuality and all forms of pleasure. Artemis also frequently called Diana, represents our connection to nature and the elements and forces of nature. What's left? Persephone embodies the cosmic alchemist, healer, and um, uh, someone who navigates the unconscious realms of existence, understands healing, and shifts in consciousness. So Persephone is actually uh, the cosmic alchemist. And then there's Hestia, the homemaker. Okay. And then there's Hera, represents feminine power without being predatory, but still a different kind of strength. A, archetypal strength, a spiritual strength. Look at those seven archetypes and you see that if we embody them, that would change not only you and me, it would change the world. So once again, Demeter, Mother Energy, um, uh, Athena, Wisdom, Culture, Art, Knowledge, Science, um, Aphrodite, sexuality, sensuality, pleasure, Artemis, nature, Diana, Persephone, alchemist, Hestia, homemaker, and uh, Hera, feminine power of a totally different kind, archetypal, going beyond physical, entering the realm of intuition, uh, deep understanding, unfettered imagination, curiosity, wonder, and also ultimately innocence. Innocence is the embodiment um, of an archetype that we call the Virgin Mary, giving birth to the innocent child, which is the divine child, the divine child, innocence, wonder, curiosity, uh, unfettered imagination, higher calling, on and on. So in every tradition, look at all the biblical figures and you'll find feminine power. And of course, masculine power also. So look at the Bible and you'll find them. Sarah, uh, Hagar, many, many others. Rebecca, they're all uh, embodiments of feminine power. But then when we go to Eastern wisdom traditions in, in the Buddhist traditions, you have uh, the Dakinis, the beings of light, the feminine beings of light, also called sky-clad divine light beings that are feminine power. And of course, you're familiar, I'm sure, with white Tara and green Tara and all the different Taras that represent the rainbow body, which all embody uh, powers like love, compassion, 
health, joy, healing, on and on. So we find that in uh, the Tibetan mystical traditions as well. In the Christian traditions, of course, we have the angels, all kinds of angels, and some of them represent masculine energies, some of them represent feminine energies. But now I want to come to my tradition, which is uh, Tantra and Kashmir Shaivism and uh, Buddhist techniques that actually give us techniques to embody feminine power. Okay, actually give us techniques for embodying feminine power. So I'm going to show you a little book here, uh, which I've uh, had for the last uh, 45 years. And you can see that it has uh, the colors directly and indirectly of the seven colors of the rainbow, all the rainbow bodies and all the rainbow energies as well that embody the likeness of being. So now let me share with you some uh, divine feminine energies or strengths or powers um, which are very specifically articulated in the Vedic tradition of um, yoga and Kriya and, uh, and other techniques that have to do with Tantra. Um, here's a picture of uh, Shiva that represents um, pure consciousness and then everything else, Shakti, is feminine power that emerges from pure consciousness. Okay, now I'm going to show you a few of these beautiful um, divine uh, feminine powerful archetypes. Archetypes are states of energy, states of uh, awareness, um, states and concentrations of symbolic representation of expanded higher consciousness with particular themes and motifs and if we embody them then our body represents those. You know, in every tradition, um, in the Christian tradition, for example, when um, Catholic nuns um, meditate on Jesus on the cross and bring Jesus into their heart, they can get stigmata uh, in their heart that represent that uh, energy. Okay, and in fact, stigmata are very well known. In India, people sometimes, uh, monks of the Shaivite tradition, meditate on the symbol Om, on the symbol Om here. And frequently they'll get uh, a mark, a physical mark that is the symbol Om, or over here in one of the chakras or the crown chakra. So we know that if you imagine or focus or concentrate or do dharna or dhyan and then go into samadhi you can actually download um, a symbolic representation of a story and embody it incarnate it in your body incarnate it in your body so your body actually carries the energy of um, that archetype of that state of energy, of that state of awareness, and then you become capable of doing extraordinary things that you wouldn't be able to do as a human, but you now um, are able to do as a meta-human. Carly says, Alpha and Omega, beautiful. Yes, Alpha and Omega, black and white and everything else in the rainbow body. Without these two, it would not happen. And we are light beings, we are rainbow bodies entangled. And uh, the Tibetans would say these are the devas and the dakinis that are light beings that are actually in the archetypal collective domain. Not the Nirmana Kaya, which is the physical world, but the Samboya, Sambhoga Kaya, and ultimately the Dharma Kaya. Okay, so let me go into some beautiful um, archetypes from Shaivism. So in Shaivism, Shiva is the 
Purusha, pure consciousness, Shakti is feminine power, Shakti, Shakti is the movement of pure consciousness into manifestation. By embodying feminine power, we become capable of manifesting the themes that are represented in that feminine archetype. So here we show you, I show you the first feminine archetype here, Bhairavi, Bhairavi, okay? Also called Bak Devi. Bak Devi, the goddess of speech, represents the universal form which brings named world into existence. She personifies time eternal, cosmic time, incorporating all gods and goddesses. She is also known as Sweta Kali because she received all tantric scriptures from Shiva, the source of Tantra. She is praised as the greatest of all deities of the highest reality. So there are techniques now, tantric techniques that involve color, mantra, yantra, um, to invoke this feminine power that we call Bhairavi. Bhairavi. Bhairavi also means the one that you should be um, scared of because she's fierce. She cannot tolerate ignorance. Okay, the second one here. Look at this beautiful one, second one. Devi Bhubaneshwari. Devi Bhubaneshwari is said to nourish the three worlds. Um, she nourishes um, with uh, feminine power. She is bright and radiant and holds a lotus bow, a goad and a noose. Each of these represent um, a certain type of strength. Okay. And then we have Devi Chin, Chinamasta. Okay, here, uh, Chinamasta, accompanied by two yoginis, Dakini and Varnini, stands over Kama. Kama means pleasure, and Rati, the male and female principles who personify the experience of duality. The severed head in her hand is an indication to the sadhaka to shed his ego in one stroke. See? I don't know if you can see it, but that's what it is. Then there's Tara here, Tara, goddess of compassion, uh, right here, Tara. Tara with gold halo is dark, drapes herself with a tiger skin, wears a garland of severed heads. She's pregnant and rests on the body of Lord Shiva. Again, Shiva is pure consciousness, Shakti is the manifestation, the power that allows the manifestation. Then, um, Tripura Sundari, Tripura Sundari. Tripura means three pronged, Sundari, beautiful. Um, here she is, okay, here. Yeah. The goddess of universe, the most beautiful mother deity, Tripura Sundari is worshipped in 64 forms. Worship is not really the right word, invoked would be um, incarnate, um, embody. She's seated on a golden throne, which has uh, Brahma, Vishnu, Rudra, and Indra as support. So all the masculine energies are by her side. Now here's something that my mother introduced me to, Mahalakshmi. Uh, she is the goddess of wealth and abundance. And then right next to her, right here, is uh, Mahasaraswati, the goddess of wisdom and knowledge. And this is the yantra that goes along. Uh, okay, so I have to share with you a very interesting story. So when I was a little baby, or not baby, <laughs> toddler, uh, my mother used to tell me about these two, you know, the, the goddess of abundance and the goddess of uh, wisdom. Okay, so this is the goddess of abundance and this is the goddess of wisdom. And she would tell me that these are symbolic energies of uh, feminine power. And she said they are the two most important. The symbolic representation as feminine power of wisdom, knowledge, art, science, culture, technology, all of that, and music. And uh, then the goddess of abundance, Mahalakshmi. So at a very early age, she actually showed me how to invoke these energies through mantras and through various mudras and tantric 
techniques that I didn't realize were tantric techniques. But she said something very important to me. She said, why don't you, um, why don't you um, woo, you know what woo means, uh, engage with and try to attract. Why don't you go after the goddess of wisdom and ignore the goddess of abundance and wealth and money? And what will happen is that the goddess of wealth, money, and abundance will get jealous because you're ignoring her and you're only um, invoking and bringing the wisdom and embodying it. And then, you know, the other one, the one that represents abundance and um, wealth, she'll get jealous and she'll chase you. You don't have to chase her. You just chase the one that uh, embodies uh, wisdom, knowledge, art, culture, mystery, story, and the rest will come. My guru said that once too. I, you know, he asked me, Maharishi Mahesh, he asked me to leave my regular practice and start talking about consciousness. And uh, uh, I asked him, where's the money going to come from? And he thought for a bit and he said, the money will come from... Uh, uh, wherever it is at the moment, and it did. So invoking, embodying, incarnating feminine power is a very practical thing, very practical thing. And we can use mantra, tantra, yantra, mudra, chants, breathing techniques, even yogic postures to invoke and embody these feminine powerful energies that will make us all, it doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman, it will make us all capable of extraordinary things. So that's it for today. I hope this made sense. Micheline Newman from UK says, good evening, good evening to you. And um, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm watching your feedback. What book is that? I am a sculptor and would like to use this info. This is a very old book. I don't even know if it's available. It's called Tantra. Uh, and uh, I've had it for 40 years, so I don't know. But I hope uh, what I explained was clear and practical. Embody feminine power you'll move in the direction of enlightenment and uh, you will become capable of extraordinary things. You'll become meta-human. Take care, my friends. I'll 